Good morning, Architecture 1 and 2. This is the Commercial Roof S System Lecture. And there are lots of different styles of commercial roofs, and there's probably, I don't know, a thousand different ways that you can actually put one together. And in all honesty, a lot of them are very experimental um, as well. But there are some very common... Uh, traits, I guess, to commercial roofing, and uh, you'll kind of see that as we go through the slide presentation. Now, the first slide. Okay, there we go. First slide I have shows a section view of a roof. Uh, you can see it from, this is the top of the roof, the parpet. Um, and you can see the roof itself over here, and this is the carpet. And just to kind of go down from the top and see how things are put together, um, you can see the carpet up top, how it's slanted toward the back, okay, because we don't want water to build up on that. And there is a metal flashing on the top of this. And uh, at the ends of the flashing, you see what we call drip edges, Okay, off of that so that the water is not dripping straight down the side of the wall or even on the inside portion of the carpet. Um, many different ways to structure these things, so we're not going to get too detailed into that. One of the main things that you want to remember about these, so when you do create a commercial uh, you know, design with a what we call a flat roof. It's not really flat because there is a 2% slope to it, at least a 2% slope, okay? And uh, you can see it even annotates that right here, a 2% slope going back, of course, away from the main carpet wall or the uh, facade wall. Um, and uh, just looking at this, you know, one of the things I'll point out is the way these are structured most roofs that you would see in a house typically would have a roof and then your insulation and everything would be on the underside, on the interior side of the, or the attic side of the roof. It's not so in commercial. In commercial, they put the insulation. This is a rigid foam insulation uh, right here that is actually on the exterior. Uh, now, of course, that rigid foam insulation doesn't get wet or anything because, um, um, you can see actual the layer of structure here in the annotation it starts with a steel structural, uh, see, well, let's see, steel structure. I think they're talking about the beam here and then the steel deck. These little uh, t teeth looking thing represents the steel deck itself. And we'll get uh, to see a different angle of that here in just a minute. Um, but that is a steel deck. And then, of course, a 5 8 inch cement board right here, which is pretty much like plywood um, or any any type of wood that we've you know normally talked about using as like a decking type of material. Uh, here, instead of plywood, though, it's made of concrete. So it's just kind of formed concrete sheets. And then on top of that, looks like we have a vapor barrier. So this dark line right here would represent the vapor barrier and then a minimum of four inch rigid insulation. So this is the actual insulation right here, rigid foam insulation. That doesn't get wet because it has another, uh, looks like a half inch cement board on top of that one, on top of that rigid insulation. And then an in elast elastometric membrane, two ply. And the membrane is basically like a tar paper, and there are hundreds of different types of materials that you can use to do this with. Um, but it could be a tar paper and a, uh, also asphalt. The tar paper is glued down with asphalt um, sometime in multiple layers. And um, then, of course, I don't know if you've ever driven by a commercial project before where they're constructing a commercial building and you might see someone standing on top of it with what looks like a flamethrower and uh, that is used to actually heat these uh, components up the uh, tar or the asphalt and the tar paper and to make those seals you know permanent uh, cant strip here is a strip that is used to basically provide a um, um, a cant to, instead of having this open where water could build up in this corner, uh, 
they have this cant strip that allows the water to just drain on out and go on down the roof. Um, and those are all really the important parts. Uh, the main focus on any type of roof really is weatherization, weatherization and insulation. So uh, that's how that is accomplished in this particular drawing. Here is another drawing, more like a hand drawing it looks like, but uh, same thing. Um, this one's a little different structure. You have uh, what we call easy joists right here. This would be, you know, how you normally would have ceiling joists, you know, these, uh, you know, horizontal joists that, you know, that you put your ceiling up against. Um, they have those two in the commercial type instruction, construction. And uh, easy joists are actually joists that are made uh, like a um, truss. And it's made of both wood and metal. The strips, the top and bottom strips are wood. And then, of course, this metal is in between it. Um, a lot of times they come like as a kit and they can actually be assembled on site where you just take your, your wood and then you assemble the, the metal trusses in there. Uh, those metal trusses have like nail plates at the corners that nail to the wood. Um, and you see in this case too, they're using wood as a furring material instead of metal or instead of a decking or anything like that. Uh, I don't see any decking in this picture, so I'm assuming they're performing that same decking function with wood. Um, and then, of course, putting the... Uh, this one is using plywood, 18 millimeter plywood decking for taped or decking taped for air tightness. Um, rigid insulation, two layers of rigid insulation here. Um, more plywood decking. Of course, they could also use that cement board as well. And then waterproof flat roof membrane. Same thing, just uh, you know, a mixture of tar papers and other types of materials with asphalt heated and sealed permanently. Here is the cant as well. Um, the parpet isn't as, uh, I guess, as detailed as the parpet in the last picture, uh, but there is a parpet cap on here that is, uh, you know, made to keep water from getting down to the wall itself. This is another look at one uh, from the top or sort of a uh, projected view. Um, orthographic view or whatever you want to call it. And uh, this kind of shows the different layers and how they're assembled. You got your metal decking down here. Okay. And uh, most of our uh, schools actually have this. All of our schools that I've seen uh, have the metal decking, not just as the roof material, but also as the base of the floor material. Um, metal decking with concrete. So your second floor uh, would actually have this metal decking and concrete poured over it. Um, for the roof, not so much. Sometimes for the roof, they'll do it a little bit differently. This is very akin to the type of roof that's on the building here at the Career Center. Um, but you have the metal decking. Uh, then you have the foam rigid insulation with uh, fasteners that fasten all that down. Then you have a layer of asphalt, and that asphalt works to... Uh, um, seal everything up and also to glue the next layer of insulation board on top of that. So there's sort of a, uh, a glue function there. Uh, and then the, um, the glass ply premier polyfelt, which is basically a felt paper or tar paper, uh, that is laid on in layers and it's overlapped and you see how the overlap works. There is tar between each layer, and that, again, serves as sealant and something to hold that tar paper in place. And then over the top of that, they have what we call a cap sheet. Um, this cap sheet, of course, once all this felt is laid down, then they put um, more asphalt or tar. You can call it asphalt or tar. And then, of course, the cap sheet is sort of glued on top of that. Okay. Uh, the cap sheet in, in general is is uh, one of its primary functions is more of a reflectant type material um, to sort of reflect the light. As you can see, it is a lighter color. Um, not all roofs are like that, but this one certainly is. 
Now, once all that gets accomplished, um, you have um, you have to drain the water off of the roof. And here's just three methods of doing that. Uh, this method method right here actually puts a crease in the roof, sloping the roof almost like a uh, like a gable roof, uh, sloping it to both sides. And then, of course, there is a gutter system that catches that water and takes it on out to the ground. Let me go back up here. Okay, this is one that's more akin to what you're doing, um, except for yours, it's going to have a carpet wall in the back with uh, access points cut like this into the wall uh, to allow water to drain out. Okay, and you can see here the drainage just goes right down through here into a gutter system. I didn't have you do the gutter system because I haven't quite figured out how the gutter thing works on Revit, uh, and I didn't really feel like it was all that important. Um, to uh, learn how to do the, the gutter system on Revit. That can always be taken care of in detail. And then this one where the all the water drains to the center. Um, and then of course there's a plumbing system. Once the water drains to the center, it goes down a drain and then goes through some pipes and is emptied out of the building at some point. I can actually show you some here on the Career Center if you like where um, the pipes that come down the side of the building and then empty out uh, onto the ground. There's actually one right here by the classroom, and on days where it's raining kind of heavy, you can actually go over there to the corner and hear the water um, draining down through that, that drain pipe. And what does that actually look like on top of the roof is like this right here. You might even drive by in the summer and see some workmen up on top cleaning the drains, making sure there's no debris, checking them out. Um, and this is kind of a problem area. This is one of the areas where uh, the leakage sometimes occurs and, and has to be repaired, uh, but around these drains. So uh, these drains would actually just uh, collect all the water. And of course, you can see here there's lots of debris, probably because they have a lot of tall trees wherever this is at. Uh, we don't have that much of a problem here in Texas with that. I mean, there does does sometimes get some dirt up there and some buildup of dust or whatever, uh, but typically you don't get a lot of uh, leaves or pine straw or anything like that. So this is this is it, man. This how those uh, this is how those roofs are put together. So watch those videos, and then you can kind of make sense of how all this works. You know, once you see this and then start putting it together. In Revit, you can kind of have an idea of what's going on. Okay? If you have any questions, please ask.